Welcome to week one. All right, let's dive right in. So the first step to feeling like you can keep any foods in the house, the first step towards making peace with food, um, the first step towards eating a salad because you want to, not because you feel like you have to, and being able to stop at a half of a cookie because you're satisfied, not because you feel like you have to or because it goes into your macros, involves a very scary but crucial first step in this journey. And it's giving yourself full permission on all foods. This means no foods are off limits and you're able to eat what you want while learning what amounts feel good to you. So our goal here, it's actually to start taking these previously restricted foods down from their pedestals and to stop glorifying or demonizing certain foods. The goal is to eventually learn how to eat as you would on vacation, as you would on a random Monday night at home. So I like to think of this as like a pendulum effect. So if you think of um, a lot of people on the weekdays, they eat so good, they stay within their macros, everything's wonderful. And then all of a sudden they kind of come down here, their pendulum swings into a hard overeating or binging episode on the weekends. And then you go to the weekdays and you're eating clean and eating to your macros, eating to your approved foods list. And then all of a sudden you start binging and overeating on the weekends. This is called the binge restrict cycle and it keeps going and going. And what our goal is to remove that restriction. So you might see an increased side in your overeating at first, because let's face it, now you're allowed to eat all these foods. Um, but what happens is without that, that hit against that binge side, you actually start to slow your pendulum down instead of it being back and forth like this. So now you may start initially swing over here, but then you're going to very slowly like come to this nice little rhythm here. So that's what that uh, binge restrict pendulum kind of looks like. And um, this means, like I said, no more foods are off limits. So um, when we take these foods down from their pedestals, right? You think of all the foods that you previously restricted, um, carbs, sugar, bread, anything like that. Um, when you stop glorifying these foods, what you do is you actually start to neutralize them. You stop demonizing them and you take the power away from them. You take that intensity away from them when you start to slow down your pendulum and take these foods down from their pedestals. So the goal is to eventually learn how to eat, like I said, as you would on a Monday, as you would on a Saturday, to eat as you would on vacation, as you would on a random Monday. So you might experience, like I said, that increased overeating phase in the beginning, but it will definitely and eventually even itself out. So let me first answer your biggest fear right now, because I know Know you have one particular food in mind that if you think you allow yourself full permission on, you'll never be able to stop eating. Yes, you will be able to stop eating this food because it will begin to neutralize once you view it as abundant and not a scarce resource. And no, you will not eat like this forever. I like to think of it. Um, I did a TikTok recently on the toilet paper analogy. Think of um, during the pandemic back in April when it was so hard to find toilet paper, right? So you're looking, looking, and even if you did have an abundant amount at home, even if you saw it at the stores, if you got lucky enough to walk in when they were restocking, you grabbed it because you didn't know when that toilet paper was gonna come back. You didn't know if you'd see any anymore. So you stocked up. Well, this is the same thing when you restrict a food. It becomes scarce in your brain. And then when you see it, you eat it. And not only that, but you eat it all because you don't know when you're gonna get this food again. So treat your relationship with food how you would wanna be treated in real life, like a real life relationship. Are you being manipulative, unrealistic, restrictive, op oppressive, obsessive, controlling, manic, or taking more than you're giving in your current relationship with food? If so, you're not alone. And this is why you're here. So don't view full permission on food as a cheat day or something like an all or nothing buffet that you'll never be able to leave. Many people have this idea that full permission on all foods means a free for all period of time that you aren't taking care of yourself. Many people also fear that if they start eating a certain food, then they'll never be able to stop. So here's a great example of why this restrictive mindset like puts us into this scarcity mode. 
the last time I remember giving myself full permission on all foods, I was pregnant with my second son, which is why I thought intuitive eating or eating intuitively or food freedom would never work for me because I've done it before. And this is why I thought um, this pregnancy would be a great break from my macro counting that I meticulously did for five straight years without, without interruption. And that I could just eat what I wanted um, without worrying about counting macros or restrictive eating. I was intuitive eating in my own terms here. I always ate whatever I wanted, but always had the end date in mind of once I get off maternity leave and had my son, it was back to strict counting again so I could get my body back. With this type of thinking, and especially when people use cheat days as a way to give themselves a caloric break, this catapults us into this black or white thinking with an all or nothing mentality around health. I remember one day at lunch, I went to Panera and I got the pick two combo with the Greek salad and the broccoli cheddar soup, oh, my fave. And I got the kitchen sink cookie, which is also my fave. And every time I went there, I finished up my lunch. And even though I wasn't hungry, I remember one time specifically, I'm like, I am really not hungry. I dove straight into the cookie, not half, but all of it when I wasn't hungry, because my thought process on this was, I won't be able to eat this after the baby's born. So I might as well eat it all now to get my fill in. And it didn't taste as good because I ate it so fast and I had the worst stomach ache afterwards because I was overly full. So the lesson learned here is when you have an end date in mind, full permission will never work. So that all or nothing mindset sent my favorite Panera lunch, like right back into a plane, like on off limits land where I admired it from afar and put it up on its pedestal and constantly called it back for more love it and leave it treatment. But this is not a healthy relationship with food or a healthy relationship in general. Fearing food is not healthy. The way we heal our relationship with food is by treating it the same way we would treat a person with respect and appreciation. This means all foods in all quantities at all times can fit into our lives as long as we're respecting it to our personal satisfaction level. We just have to make the choice of how much and what feels good to us without judgment or prejudice. So first, we really need to uproot our foundation of diet culture. What is diet culture, you ask? It values thinness, body shape, and body weight over true health, meaning a person is only healthy, valuable, and worthy if they're a current, the current shape, size, or trend that's being appreciated at this time. So does it sound familiar? Because I know I've been wrapped up in this for so freaking long. You too? <laughs> well, you're in the right place here, my friend, because a person's health has very little to do with their size or shape. Uh, in fact, I know many people who are actually healthy at a bigger size, my story included. And this is why this journey takes time. This takes consistent mental practice and a willingness to start looking at yourself from that investigative standpoint rather than a really hateful one. So we are actually unlearning and unraveling decades of diet culture that have shaped us as friends, parents, partners, and the humans we are today. So this eight week program that you're on right now it's not going to end after week eight and suddenly this transformation is going to happen and you're going to be great. This takes consistent practice. So get all of those diet culture terms out of your head, like getting back on track or falling off the wagon or starting again on Monday. There is no more get shredded, lose weight fast, 30 day restrictive challenges. With food freedom and intuitive eating, you eat the same as you do on Monday as you would on a Saturday. You eat the same as you do on vacation as you did at home, like I said before. A weekend away or a night out have no anxiety, guilt, or shame attached to them. And you're finally able to keep any food in the house without thinking about it 24 seven. Food is just food. With food freedom, you live in the gray. You live between the two extremes. There is no more black or white thinking. Your new objective is to live through the signals of your body and to experience pleasure around food, not the intensity. I wanna tell you something here though. Expect discomfort. And I say this and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah Christy, I know it's going to be hard. Da, 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 da. No, expect that things aren't going to go right. What might happen in the beginning? You might eat more than expected. The reality is when these foods first come back, you might need to have that out of control feeling around them at first. I know I had mine, but I promise you this does not last. Every client of mine has the exact same fear and none of them have, have like gone through this and being like, I still have this. It's gone. So, but the sooner you implement this, this healing, 
the sooner your peace will come with food. So think about the last time you had pizza and you were so excited to eat it. That first night you ate so much that it kind of made your stomach hurt because you probably haven't allowed yourself pizza in a while. Then you had it again the next night for dinner because leftover pizza is so amazing. Then you finish off that last couple slices for breakfast or dinner the next day and that newness wore off pretty quickly once you had it for a couple days straight. The fourth night, you probably wanted nothing to do with the pizza. This is the same thing. You will eventually tire yourself out as you slowly start bringing these foods down from their pedestals. It may seem scary at first. It may seem wrong at first. It may seem like you're literally breaking a law or like committing murder, <laughs> but this is such a necessary and important part of the process. You cannot skip this part. So I speak a lot um, you're going to hear me say a lot about satisfaction and nourishment. So you're going to hear me consistently speaking about these words. So view uh, satisfaction as like a fun food or a food that you've previously labeled as off limits, bad or unhealthy. If we've been crash dieting our whole lives or chronically counting and restricting, our bodies have been in little mini famines. That's basically what dieting is because we're wired for survival and diets are wired for short term. They are not meant to be lived out 365 days a year. It's a caloric deficit that is not meant to be a lifestyle. If we've been in a famine for too long, our minds will constantly put us into thoughts about food, finding food and eating food. Our body's main job when it's been deprived for so long is to store it and keep like as much fat on us as possible in case there's another famine. We're currently in the process of training our brains that we're not going to put it through that next famine. So our body has to learn how to trust ourselves again around food. So this is about rebuilding that trust within ourselves by feeding both our biological need to eat as well as our mental desire to satisfy cravings. We are put, we are putting that scarcity at and um, that scarcity mindset at bay here. And when I say nourishment, I mean all the foods you've previously called healthy or um, whole foods, things like that. Really, we need to feed both our appetite, which is our uh, satisfaction, and then we need to feed our hunger, which is our um, nourishment. And we will go into that in another week. But I want to give you some short quick ideas here. Um, basically eight ways to give yourself full permission on all foods. So here is how you start this process, because if I'm just going to be like, Hey, give yourself full permission on all foods. Okay. Bye. See ya. Like I want to tell you how to do it. Small steps you can take to get there because this is very, very scary, but you have to go through this very daunting and scary path to get to where you want to be. So the first one out of the eight is to allow yourself your fear foods. So give yourself permission to eat your fear food at each meal if you have to. This can be a bite, a handful, or the whole thing. Let your brain know that this food is not going anywhere. Allow your brain to accept the abundance of this food instead of putting it into that scarcity mode. Remember, we talked about that with the toilet paper. So feed yourself enough food and food that's going to satisfy you. Cravings are trying to tell you something, whether it's a craving for love, connection, vitamin C, sleep, food, understanding, or water, your body will send you signals of what it needs. And ignoring those cravings only makes things worse. What you resist will persist. Number two, go for the small win first. I completely understand if giving yourself full permission on all foods scares you and relieves you at the same time. It scared me like a clown standing at the foot of my bed when I first started this. So start small. Delete your calorie tracking app. I remember the biggest thing I allowed myself at first was to stop measuring everything. I put away my measuring cups and measuring spoons and just eyeballed. That's a great first small step. I roughly estimated my servings and that was a great start. Then I moved on to allowing myself double portions of peanut butter or oatmeal. So instead of a quarter cup, I would say, okay, I'm gonna eyeball out a half of a cup. Um, then I moved on to allowing myself real deal foods, which um, I always wanted like cheese on my salad or butter on my broccoli or regular dressing instead of low calorie ones or eating real pizza instead of cauliflower crust pizza eating real ice cream instead of nice cream, putting creamer in my coffee, rice with dinner, a bun on my burger, real eggs instead of egg whites, or drinking a regular latte instead of skinny ones. I freaking hate that taste of skinny lattes now. I can taste the aspartame or stevia and I just I can't handle it anymore. So eventually you will move on to eating things like cereal and spaghetti in amounts that feel good to you, but start small. 
The third one, this is so important. Use addition, not subtraction. Diets use subtraction. In here, in this world of abundance, we use addition. I would basically eat the same as I normally would, but I added those things that I was always missing. I would get fries with my salad or drink a protein shake with my waffles. This all happened so slowly yet so quickly. I started opening up the recipes I had always wanted to try but never could because of the calorie, carb, or fat amount I couldn't afford into my macros. It was so freeing to be able to make real spaghetti instead of spaghetti splash and much more fulfilling. I did not have to have 10 snacks afterwards and really like just add a salad to it. That's, that's all I really needed with my regular spaghetti. Or I would enjoy a donut with my coffee and eat half, um, half of it with a veggie omelet for breakfast and not have to like secretly bargain or destroy myself over it. This will eventually come with time, but make small steps each day and count them as a win. It might feel wrong or like you're breaking a lot first, like I talked about before, but remember that diet culture is not the boss of you anymore. We are learning to trust ourselves again. Number four is to challenge your food police. So do you hear that voice in your head that says, don't eat that, it's bad for you? Or do you often hear that has too many carbs or sugar in it? Don't be afraid to challenge those beliefs and ask why. Why can't I eat that fruit afternoon? Why can't I have two pieces of toast instead of one? Why can't I eat those noodles with my dinner? Are those all food rules that have been made up in your head? More than likely, these rules are the ones that have been um, starting the war on food in your head. These rules are arbitrary, false, and they're holding you back from actually experiencing them. Number five is to have no more morals on foods. So food is neither good nor bad. Food is just food. I could put you on a Snickers diet and you could lose weight. I could also put you on a whole foods diet and you could gain weight. Food is meant to be pleasurable and enjoyable, not solely just as fuel. Sure, some foods make you feel better or worse based on your personal satiety levels, but one cookie isn't going to ruin your day or make you unhealthy or gain 20 pounds overnight, just like one salad won't make you healthy for the rest of your life. Food can either control you or nourish you. We label food as good or bad, we also label ourselves good or bad when we do so. Instead of calling food healthy or unhealthy, label it something a little better, like more nourishing or less nourishing. Your vocabulary around food matters so much because you become what you think about most. If you're constantly eating bad or unhealthy foods, then you yourself will start to view yourself as bad or unhealthy. So start becoming more in tune with how you talk about food. Remember, this is a relationship. We're working on healing. You don't love your family members or your kids only when they're being good or healthy, right? So why would you only love yourself when you're being good or healthy? So number six is to get curious. Think about this as a science experiment. Instead of hating yourself for eating something that you weren't supposed to eat um, or eating more than your body needed, say instead, I'm not upset for eating what I thought my body needed. Think of this as a science experiment where we're figuring out what works for you. You are so unique. And as much as I would just love to give you this perfect formula for how your body works, that's just not realistic. Nothing like that is. You are the investigator and the owner of your mind and your body. Only you can crack the code to do what works for you. So start investigating on your failures instead of hating on them. Instead of getting angry, get curious. Number seven is to allow compassion. This process is hard and it is not easy. Give yourself some grace. Expect that things aren't gonna go perfect. And honestly, you might never have a perfect day of eating intuitively. I still haven't had my perfect day yet and I don't expect to because I'm happy with learning every day about myself. But remember that each small win, it's a step forward. Each recognition of an old thought pattern is a win. You won't get it right all the time and I don't expect you to. Remember that you're doing the best you can with what you have. Unraveling decades of diet culture takes time and patience. You're doing great. And number eight, your progress marker will change. It's not easy to just suddenly accept these new concepts of health when it feels like everything you know about health has, has been turned upside down. So this is where you need to come up with a new measurement of progress. So your progress marker is no longer eating perfectly, looking a certain way, or the number on the scale. Your progress marker is how you're feeling and how consistent you are at challenging those fraudulent diet culture thoughts. I would highly recommend even getting rid of the scale for a while because this is no longer your measurement of success. Instead, your measurement of success, it's going to be... Um, 
within your investigating mindset and healing your relationship around food and your body. How you take care of your body is more important than how your body looks. Skinny has nothing to do with being healthy. Self-care is your new health marker now. So it's really important if you want to get a journal or something like that to really start digging these feelings out. But hope you enjoyed this lesson. We will move on to the next in just a little bit.